Hi guys, in the name of Christ, how you doing? It's your girl Queen K. Uh, carabo. I hope you're good, I hope you're peachy, I hope you're Stella, and I hope you're in a neat little bunch. It is the 20th of November 2023, it's a Monday, and I hope to be able to get exercise in later today. Yeah, because, you know, every so often I am challenged in ways that I can't fathom. Anywho, let me just put some caveats out there. Um, I'm wearing application makeup so if it bounces around all over the show have mercy it's not the real deal it's an app number two my captions are not always accurate please take them in your stride I don't have time to edit them in the future maybe I shall and they also use a small G for God they're kind of irreverent and there's misspellings and stuff like that so check that out look out for it number three um, I might have a speech lag later it's a bit cooler on in the day but this is an old phone so sometimes it gives me problems <clears throat> and thank god we have found a way around the silence detector taking out my words so that's not an issue anymore alrighty cool let's just get straight into this even though i don't know what this is but you know we'll figure it out as time progresses look at my hair lovely isn't it doing really well after the like hyper moisture my method of moisturizing my hair i do believe really goes a very long way to not only grow my hair like at super violent speeds but it just keeps it looking so lustrous for so long you might want to wrap it and take it and run with it mm. uh you know i put a plastic bag on my head and i just kind of leave it there for 24 hours after moisturizing yeah if once a week i do that and it's done this for my hair so up to you if you want to roll like that despite having put the plastic bag on it did not mess with the neatness of the hair so um yeah guys i'm all about giving all that advice take it or leave it it's up to you uh, in terms of my skin y'all it's working um thank god i got off the omni gold because it was giving me lighter skin it was essentially bleaching me and i was not trying to do that but it, it did also clear my acne remember i was concerned that i would get acne again if i stopped using the product it's been three days i'm still crossing my fingers and i don't have any new acne amen so it turns out cell, cell tone spot control on its own is a power worker so amen uh and my skin is don't know if you can tell as well it's evening out i thought it would take like a whole month maybe two for me to re transition from the bleaching because like i was bleached in this area and I was just getting super light, I was not feeling it. But I appear to be evening out. Um, just from being off Omni Gold for three days. So one of these days I'm going to be the same tone all over. Likely within two weeks I'll probably be completely recovered. Because it's only been like three days. And already there is not much of a demarcation as you guys can see. Between this skin tone and that. I'm already coming back home. So amen. In terms of the lightness of my skin, can you tell that I'm getting my dark in complexion skin back? Uh, I'm coming back here. I'm not as bright as I was like when I was on Omni Gold every day. Mm -hmm. It's coming back. My skin tone is like wearing. So thank God. One of these days I'm gonna be looking exactly the same. There will always be a white casty thing flashing back at you because of my sunscreen i don't have money to change that around so that's always going to be a thing but at least i'm going to be back to my normal skin tone in a flash so thank god uh i found that after getting off omni gold my skin is so hyper moisturized it's just so richly moisturized it's it's glowing it's popping uh i, I do believe like uh, likely that is because omni gold has got i believe quite a high alcohol content um so alcohol is quite drying even when you like hyper moisturize so because that product is out there's no more all that much too much alcohol on my thigh on my physite so all the products are basically doing what they're supposed to do so that's why getting omni gold is a wonderful product it is but use it like once every two weeks in the e in the evenings or in the mornings or in the morning and in the evening on one day after for over two weeks or once every three weeks or once even a month because it it will fast track it works really quickly on hyperpigmentation like really fast and you don't even have to be using it every single day it's like the first application or the first two applications are so poignant in potency in working on you that all you need is like one application just like a chemical peel and then you will just continue to peel for the week coming it works like that so it's best used sparingly uh, i guess it makes sense why there is so little of it in the container um 
because I guess that's how people are supposed to use it not daily not twice a day just once every so often just to keep your skin looking bright works really quickly on um, dark circles just anything hyperpigmentation but it is definitely not to be utilized every day unless you want to maintain a skin tone that's not your own and also unless you want moisturizer to not matter no matter how much you moisturize you still kind of low-key have like a dry arid deserty face but if you want to glow and pop like this get off the stuff and just use what makes sense my white cast sunscreen i believe i've blended it well hallelujah uh it, it's it really doesn't look that bad look at me i'm popping aren't i yeah glowing outside uh even though on the inside everything sucks in terms of my facial exercises can nobody deny these things are working not only did these i was i doing these exercises on my face you know everything that i showed you guys in the one video that i did please go check it out it's called apparently i'm as good as dead but look at how my skin is popping or how my i've got like um plumpness in my cheeks whatever that's what it's called i give counsel concerning how to rejuvenate your face give yourself a natural facelift and this has happened in just like a couple of days ever since commencing my face is doing this and so too is my neck I don't know if anybody was noticing but you know the thing about the neck is you are the first one to notice like nastiness going on over there um but i feel like there's been an improvement even on my neck when i gesture you cannot see the lines that much anymore not lines but like the strings like your muscles your neck muscles when you're younger uh, rarely ever do, do people get to see that you've actually got muscles in your neck when you gesture when you talk when you move and um when you get older you start to notice that your muscles are pulling through a lot more they're a lot more uh visible a lot more prominent uh when you gesture type thing and i was starting to notice that it was really disturbing me and with the exercises that i've been doing i'm basically going back to basics i am returning to when i was younger where it is that there's minimal sighting of all the muscles that contribute to my vocals to my speaking to my gesturing left and right moving all that stuff like i don't want my muscles showing all of them that's just a sign of aging i have managed to reverse that too with just these like exercises so guys love me or hate me love me tender love me sweet do what you want to do but you cannot deny that i'm onto something and if you want to do better by yourself just go and check out that video and in it i basically display my little net e neck exercises my face exercises that give me this plump outward appearance if you were to guess my age would you say i'm 39 doubt it okay uh yeah my hair is nice and jet black i'm taking real good care of it it's growing it's thick like the hair of a thriving young person that's not yet losing collagen that's not yet losing okay what is this a uh, pigment everywhere you know um in the hair no graying nothing that's not yet losing luster thickness you know girth all that which contributes to a youthful appearance i still got everything down tip to toe Day be was it the yeah, day before yesterday? Yesterday I was singing like a whole bunch and oh goodness, whoa. I was so exhausted from singing that my heart was sad. Mmm. It's cause I just felt like why do I have to keep on doing all this stuff for crying out loud? Like why can't I just live? Why can't I just have a life? Why do I have to keep fighting so many people? Yeah, so um nonetheless whatever we did it we uploaded we sang and we conquered mm, i'm here now today but the day before that i was doing my hair in front of you guys i made like a whole body butter that i also use for my hair yeah you can go and copy that body butter put it in your hair but that body butter is not the only thing that i'm doing for my hair they, my speech lag is coming in now i gotta make sure that i've saved this content um yeah anyway whatever oh my goodness like well please don't give me the speech like i just need peace like for a minute like just give me peace for a minute phone do that anyway whatever yeah that hair cream and my methodology of moisturizing has contributed to my hair growth but i have other things that i also do other things that i experiment on and perhaps one of these days i will tell you what they are um i just don't have time usually when i'm in the mood of showing people stuff <coughs> i was just incorporated into my chat sessions but um whenever that comes it comes but you can take the advice from yesterday what i'm trying to get at with her commencing this conversation like this goodness i've got this like speech lag i'm worried now i want to now save the content after just 10 minutes of talking lest it should disappoint me and not save mm, i don't know yeah i'm i'm wrapping on like this precisely because i'm literally i'm very 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 excellent 
at everything I do and yet <laughs> I'm sitting here going nowhere how is anybody content with that when when that is the world that you live in where really good people are ignored where in the world under heaven are you ever gonna get any advice that makes any sense at all when you are so jealous of the world around you that you you insist on neutralizing anybody that's good on the left and on the right how is anybody gonna move ahead how is any paradigm gonna be shifted how is any innovation ever gonna change and therefore improve anybody's life because that's exactly where this is going don't you see all of this insanity all of this witchcraft like <laughs> i got people who will listen to me for instance right now i made a recommendation for women to go back and watch that video yeah apparently i'm as good as dead and just based on their observation on on how things are working on my face they will go back there watch it only because i sent them there but proliferate my content share it actually really truly try to see if i can't get anywhere in life they would never help me along well, I mean, if I die, nobody's gonna rock up and help you who is aging like a prune reverse the signs. Nobody is going to innovate some kind of a pioneering hair growing thing that you're going to allow to thrive. Everybody is just gonna die because you're so jealous. Is that basic? Let me save this content because I'm not, I'm, like, it's, there's too much of a lag for me to trust that I'm able to save content. I was able to save, but I've got a speech lag here still. So I guess I'll save every 10 to 12 minutes just to make sure I don't lose everything. Um, the room is still quite warm. That's just the thing. It was a very hot day. It's 19.13. It's 13 minutes past 7 at night. So temperatures are still pretty high in here. Given that this room has no ventilation. Um, yeah, so this is just the way that my life is. It's extremely disquieting. It's, it's very disheartening for me to work like this, but it is what it is. I guess we just take it, okay? In so far as the audio is audible, that's all we're running with. Let's just finish talking about what we were talking about. The level of insanity on the earth, never mind the earth, but South Africa is like a big thing for me. It's a big challenge. It's an issue. I can't stand this country. Like the jealousy on the ground, especially among black people. And you know, the, the, the defeatism of black people is causing everybody else to mistreat and disquiet black people. It, it, it's like making an observation that they don't even care about each other. So, I mean, I guess we can just loot and plunder. So everybody else that loots us and plunders us, it is based on them making an observation that no one will come to our rescue. I was afflicted by a whole bunch of Indians in 2014 because they made an observation that black people will never come through for me so i had the carpet pulled from underneath my feet because of an observation that was made that no one's coming for me anyway whatever this jealousy that you're rolling around in this competitiveness this hard knock of basically violent ambition that you're in my question is when exactly are you anticipating or rather, let me say this, let me put it this way. What exactly are you anticipating is going to be the end result of a population when all you can do is extract every person that is gifted in any way out of the door so that you can come out number one? Because at some point you literally can knock out every body that you need to get to the next day every mind that is needed in order to survive tomorrow's calamity every innovator every brainiac that can come up with a new solution to improve even your life you will knock them out the way before they can even walk in that innovation just from making an observation that someone is as good as they are at anything they do you will literally knock them out the way before they can improve even your life or the lives of your children so what are you left with on that day? Just some mediocre society, are you not? That is just stagnated, like sticking around in one grain. One boring, unmarvelous grain. But that's the world you created around you because as a media, as a, as a mediocre rando, that's kind of flatlining. You can't for the life of you have anybody be better, can you? Anyway, look, yeah, the very same woman that you are extracting out of society trying to force her suicide yeah it appears one of these days you might just get what you want except you won't I'll, I mean like yeah I'll never stop recording 
even when I'm struggling with a phone, like right now I'm struggling with a phone to a point where I'm insecure about continuing to record because it's just got such a bad speech lag. But if at all this phone dies on me, I literally don't have any more recording devices. I don't have any more recording devices, but this is what I have to deal with every day. I was very tired today. Uh, you know, tired is not the right word, man. Like what, what do you, like it's demonic ab abuse. Yeah, it's demonic abuse. I'm not tired guys tired is you haven't slept even though you've expanded energy or you have expanded energy and you are yet to get the rest that is needed to give you energy again so you're exhausted this is not exhaustion because I slept this is not fatigue because I have yet to expand any energy today I'm still gonna go exercise all I've done is just kind of walk up and down going washing the dishes blah that's as much energy I have expanded I ate earlier so if anything I'm I should be increasing in energy I broke my fast at 6 p.m. and I ate some some muesli with some fruit I shouldn't be tired but my body is kind of zonked drained because of a bunch of psychopaths others might imagine that I speak too much about witches and witchcraft but when your whole life is encircled by exploiters who are mediocre and because they're as mediocre as they are they cannot for the life of them impress anywhere where they go because like i said flatlined and mediocre are they so in order for them to continue to look good the very people that they catch to the curb to make sure they can never breathe yeah they gotta keep draining them they gotta keep on expanding their bodies and their ecosystem that they might exsanguinate ideas you're gonna keep on coming back to your victim so you can drink their blood as through a straw so you keep them alive barely intravenously so you can drink out of them i guess in that way you're similar to the agents in the matrix right where your victims are like batteries fueling your machine of hallucinations aberrations frankly that are in an ecosystem that ought not be there but that you're pretending are the real deal everything is mediocre and if there is any excellence in the room it's only because you have exsanguinated it out of an excellent person that you're drinking the blood of as through a straw anyway whatever we're done wrapping on about that particular phenomenon let's just hope that despite the speech lag that i have over here i'll be able to continue to speak about what it is that i saw in a dream i get dreams herein lies the thing that i actually want to talk about oh goodness gracious i'm bitter i won't even deny that there are people who think calling an individual bitter is a tease or a mock or a diss no it is a side effect or a reaction uh following a trajectory that they were placed in that put them in some kind of shoddy straits and they didn't gain justice bitterness is essentially un encountered justice yeah bitterness is an is unencountered justice so anybody at all that prides themselves in teasing a person for being bitter it's like shut up what are you doing you're basically priding yourself in there being no justice in society okay people only get bitter because they get dealt a bad blow all right and then nothing gets fixed there tends to be a pacifier on the earth of people's propensity towards bitterness and it's called alleviation repatriation recovery restoration recompense otherwise known as justice and if at all justice is not paid you then end up with a society full of bitter people and unfortunately bitterness produces reactions that are kind of vigilante so when people are bitter the issue here is not so much their bitterness but the lack of justice that caused their bitterness that then makes them kind of menacing it makes them want to just kind of grab things and put them straight in their own eyes in their own image given that having awarded human beings an opportunity to do differently they just chose not to because they imagine that this person is just a number yet another human individual that we can act was never born like was never born okay when i was 20 21 um 20 let's just say 20 it was like second year varsity i had to drop out because my mom wasn't paying my fees yeah uh i became bitter somewhat uh, because of my mom's irresponsibility with my future and i had to roam around in the streets of soweto gathering incredible dust proper on my nose was the powder of Lako soweto instead of it being actual foundation and here it is that i am this just incredible genius i am an academic i did well in school i was at some point foreseen by my school as the most likely to be successful type person it was anticipated that among you know 
all the kids in my school, a group of us, certain of us, were obviously going to be successful. And I was one of them. Okay? But here it is that now I was just sitting around gathering dust and tumbleweed rolling around near my feet. Kosoweto. Looking like I could see be siboto, something of a young person that's just loitering the hood with no prospect of a future, just being wasted, squandered, to merely get old and then pass away without really making any dent on the earth. No difference. I became a typicality, a grain in the black community, something that I imagined that was the exception to that norm because I was the smart girl, I was a clever one, I was among the kids that were most likely to be successful, voted as such in school, because I was responsible then. But I unfortunately had irresponsible parents, and I had irresponsible, I guess, ecosystems around me that ought to have cared a little bit more about my life and my future to make sure that whatever it is that was the anticipation when I was in high school, that I'm, I'm gonna be among the most successful people coming out of my high school. Um, yeah, somebody was supposed to responsibly just go and grab that vote of confidence in me and run with it. I was a child and I was supposed to be protected. I was supposed to be enabled to catapult to the height I was supposed to get to, given my giftedness. And then somebody made a decision just to like stop paying my university fees, even though they could afford to. I was upset. I was embittered. I didn't want to move to KZN with my mom because I wanted to stay in the city where my university was at because I never ever intended to drop out. I wanted to go back. Plus, I went to Wits University, one of the best universities in the country. I was not about to go and register at any other university in the land other than UCT because I had standards. And since I wasn't in Cape Town, but I was in Durban, I was like, no, it's either Wits or UCT. And Wits I stayed in Gauteng because that's where my school was at. And even though I was not registered anymore, I intended to go back exactly there. So in trying to protect my own future, I stayed in Gauteng even though my mom got a job in Durban. She tried to get me registered at some lowly Durban university and I was like, I'm not going there. I think it was University of Durbanville or something. I was like, I'm not going to a sta substandard university to Wits. I qualified to get in as that basic, I'm getting a Wits degree, please. Yeah, well, she left me behind even though she could afford to pay my fees uh, and send me back. So I ended up staying at my cousin's house, Kosoweto. And this cousin was my best friend and I trusted that she would treat me well. Unfortunately for me, she changed and literally treated me like freaking Cinderella. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, I, I became tight as a result too with her little sister. She was a blessing, a massive one in disguise. Four years younger than me, nonetheless, it's like we were the exact same age. So I found solace in my little si in her little sister and her boyfriend. We used to hang out all the time. They were comforting to me, but this cousin started to treat me like violent trash because she was always very competitive. Uh, and when I went to varsity and she just carried on working some secretary job, um, it was challenging for her for me to be the academic while she was just a school leaver. Yeah, she changed on me, but I ended up making friends with her little sister. But her little sister was, remember, I'm only like in second year varsity. Uh, well, the year that I was sitting around gathering dust, it was third year. It was gonna be third year, but I was not going to school. My fees were not paid, I could not return. So I was just hanging around in the gassi, telling myself that I'm gonna get myself a job. And then uh, I'm going to save money for a year to pay my fees off and then raise uh, registration money to take myself back to school part-time. Then I will work and study at the same time. So I had a mission to take myself back to school. That was a whole plan. Uh, I was never gonna achieve that sitting in Durban. It was going to regress me. If I was in KZN, I was going to lose sight of my goals. So I had to keep myself in an uncomfortable environment where it is that I was in the ecosystem of my dreams. I was not gonna leave that place even if it was uncomfortable. It was frankly a lot easier to live with my mom because of the fact that her house was just cleaner. There was a bit of food. I, I was more accustomed to the comforts of my mom's living environment. Um, I did not like being at my cousin's uh, home in Soweto because even dinner, they, like the thing, there were just these like, just so much freaking rationing. I, I couldn't deal. Like in my mom's house, I, I used to, my mom, there was a time when she used to work for Willie's um, in HR. And my goodness, like just the delicacies, we used to eat so well and as much as we wanted. 
My mom has always been very good on cooking. She's always been very good on health. There's always been a variety of food in the refrigerator. There's never been an issue. That's why to this day still I eat as well as I do. She's always been a foodie. And so because my mom has always been a foodie, there was always just this beautiful food in the refrigerator, including desserts and stuff like that. I could have two, three, however many pieces of chicken for dinner as I wanted. But then when I was living at my cousin's house, there was just so much rationing, like one little tiny piece of chicken on your plate. Um, and so much pop and all this gravy and you know just there was not the luxury the the standard of living that i had growing up was absent in my uncle's household they were used to it but for me i felt like i was being starved I, i've been naturally very skinny all my life so i never really got fat uh therefore my mom's opulent eating habits never really got to my waistline so i imagine that maybe because my aunt and uncle imagined that i was a, a, a small eater because of how skinny i was given that he had chubby daughters like i don't even know how my cousins were so chubby like both of them they were chubby they were kind of biggish right on the larger side they were never skinny girls i don't know how they got fat because there was just no food like it's just that basic um not enough it's not like they were poor they just grew grew up eating that minimally but I had come from basically eating like a queen and a king you know that saying eating like a king back in the day the supply chain was an issue where it is that provision for entire cities was feasible through industry and trade that put you know basically food on FMCG shelves such that the lay Jane and the low lay Joe on the street can go to Willie's and buy bread back in the day it was hard to come by bread if you were a peasant it was hard to come by coca-cola and cheese yeah that's been changed in 2023 because of industry and chain and, and trade the industrial revolutions of this world has made supermarkets a thing yeah so you find food readily available in very many places therefore there's no longer such a thing as eating like a queen or like beyonce or whatever but back in the day eating like a king was really a thing because only kings had i guess all the crop and the produce of the land pretty much harvested for their palaces and so they ate like fruits vegetables just a very well balanced diet while peasants were struggling to so much as get flour in their backyards so thank you jesus for the industrial revolutions of the earth you made it possible for us upon working by the sweat of our brows to actually come up with ways to feed everybody but now there's like greed and rapacity and deliberate interruptions of the supply chain because of power megalomaniacalism in the global elites that make it such that it is impossible for all of us to have food at the same time and then they blame it on overpopulation when it's rather their opacity and barriers to entry but anyway that's another story for another day mm. yeah well i used to eat like a king or palace uh like you know dweller type oh come on this computer like don't give me that grief just switch on for crying out loud yeah uh, I used to eat like a, a, a queen in comparison anyway to my cousins and I don't know what that was about they were not struggling financially they were not a suffering family but they were they had peasant um, lifestyles in terms of their diets in a way that I didn't I was used to I mean when Willie's was new when Willie's broke branched out into food um, when Willie's branched out into food because they only used to sell clothes back in the day if you've lived in South Africa you would know that was a thing if you if you if you're if you're over a certain age you would remember that Willie's used to at some point only sell clothes and when they broke out into food they became a luxury brand of food and uh my mom around the very early stages of Willie's got a job there um in HR and so all the beautiful lovely like confectionery items like desserts for crying out loud yeah taco willies we got a first taste at them because she was you know always bringing home stock you know new stock that they would apportion some of it to staff type establishment thing so i i grew up when i was in high school goodness gracious i was eating like a little princess i ate like a queen there was always fruit there was always vegetables and there was always these exorbitant elaborate really creme de la creme cream of the crop type desserts at home like you would know when i say willie's desserts what we're talking about here if you're south african you would know it don't get no better than willies they just have a way with, with food yeah i came from an environment like that and then here it is now i was in varsity and i was living in a household where no such luxury was a thing i really did miss my mother's house i was more like a princess or a queen that suddenly had to live among the villages where my cousin's family was concerned and i i hated it i hated it but for me it was a small price to pay for my dreams for my future 
the small little portions of chicken for a skinny girl that could not afford to get skinnier the lack of dessert the lack of variety of food the inability to just gobble as much as i wanted to goodness gracious i was put on a forced diet um i ended up eating the god that's a coca see like a whole bunch just to satiate my my hunger for richness of food because i had that going down quite a lot with my mom uh, thank God it did not take me very long I guess I was kind of like a little bit of a spoiled brat to end up taking a bus to KwaZulu Natal because I just I couldn't deal with the, the, the atmosphere the environment at my uncle's but it wasn't even so much the atmosphere that moved me away or, or the lack of food it was the mistreatment it was the fact that my cousin treated me like trash and um, it really used to hurt because I was going through a lot I was yeah I was losing my mind in that ecosystem nonetheless i stuck around for as long as i did in that environment which is not even that long it was just six months but it felt like six years right yeah i even became heavily suicidal i told myself one time upon going to tlady clinic to take an hiv test because i wanted an excuse to commit suicide i i was like if at all i come out positive with hiv because i mean i had been sexually irresponsible in the in the past uh, from that date there's some guy that i dated uh for about 18 months that was like a player he was like all over the show and the last time we we fornicated he kind of pressurized me to having sex with him without a condom because he couldn't find condoms where we were at and he got all frustrated and not with me and because i didn't want my boyfriend to be mad at me i was like okay fine and ever since then i was freaking out that i could be hiv positive because he was all over the show i knew it so um um, it had been about a year maybe year and a half since that guy and i broke up and i imagined that maybe i might was i was living with hiv so i told myself that i was going to go and take an hiv test and if it was positive i was going to end my life i wanted an excuse to end my life because i got that depressed i got that miserable because of that level of loneliness one minute the test came back negative as we know i keep talking about hiv a lot and how i don't want it so obviously i came out negative so i didn't have an excuse i didn't have a reason to kill myself but i was still very depressed i was still very macabre very melancholic i was still very suicidal um i still wanted to end my life nonetheless that didn't happen and i will get to what under heaven happened over there what basically brought me back from the precipice of death because i was near redemption i was near breakthrough even though i was not born again god had always been looking out for me his eye has always been on me just like on the sparrow like that's just the thing when the lord has chosen you he, he chooses you from in your mama's womb he knits you together therein and he calls you from and predestinates you from before the foundations of the earth so even when you are like an irresponsible 20 year old that's fornicating with like a bad guy and he has a plan to rescue you at 26 his eye will be on you as it is on the sparrow and so he will see to it that you never ever do anything that's gonna wreak havoc in your life uh, or in your soul in your spirit and something that's gonna take you to eternity early um, or whatever I nearly died when I was that age I would have been a young bright upcoming lovely young woman with a massively big job that would have just been severed cut short like what do you call this thing silver cord would have just been cut short but hallelujah um i got sobered by some things that happened anyway whatever yeah so um that season i stayed where it is that i was at and the thing that caused me a severity of depression was the combination of the fact that my best friend was treating me like trash and the fact that i was not where i wanted to be in life i i was i stayed go because i wanted to be in Johannesburg I wanted to be in the region of my university where it is that I was going to go and grab my future plus if at all you are from South Africa or you know anything at all about South Africa you will know that Johannesburg or Gauteng is essentially the industrial hub of South Africa we are the largest economy in the country um, as a city followed closely by Cape Town and then Durban we are a major city so if at all you want to commence a career and do really well and you're born in the greater Johannesburg area you are blessed you're kind of like given a uh, a step ahead it's like being born in abuja nigeria like if at all you are in a central city you are given stronger odds at prosperity uh, on the kama than somebody that is from the blazis if at all your family is from there and you commute to go to the hub of the, uh, the the economic hub of johannesburg which would be basically the northern suburbs of johannesburg if at all you can travel with ease there using buses podcasts taxis whatever you have an advantage you are at a benefit do you understand in comparison to everybody else in south africa so i was born thankfully by the amazing grace of god and bread like in soweto initially and then we moved to like suburbs or in and around the johannesburg area 
area so i had one up on pretty much all other kids in in south africa you know i i was automatically born and raised in an environment that increased or you know gave me a little bit of a boost and a push in light of my prospects i was given an advantage just by mere virtue of being from johannesburg so i was not about to go and move to kwazulu natal not only is johannesburg the largest economy in the country the salaries in i was studying these things even as a child right plus it was communicated to me in my studies at university anyway so i kind of knew it uh salaries if at all you were to go on pay scale pay scale it's some kind of a barometer that gauges salaries across multiple industries multiple jobs and you you get to use pay scale to see if at all what they're offering you as some job uh, at some company that's offering you a job if at all it's competitive with the market pay scale can help you basically be like nyangdella langdella nyangdella nyangdwaela because frankly in the market i can get this or pay scale can tell you that they 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 want you so hard and so bad having hit hunted you that they're prepared to pay you way above market yeah so pay scale will help you see that the salaries um of uh people you uh, doing the exact same job in Johannesburg versus Gauteng no sorry Gauteng is in Johannesburg uh sorry Johannesburg is in Gauteng um salaries in Gauteng uh loftier than salaries in all the other major cities of the country I don't eat Durban and Cape Town and of course a lot larger even than other non-large cities like other provinces that don't have major cities in them like Limpopo like Mpumalanga like the northwest etc you get my point so really if you are in Johannesburg you're better off you're better off because project managers in Johannesburg earn a lot more than project managers in Mpumalanga who earn a lot more than sorry who are who earn a lot less than project managers in Cape Town etc 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 so i knew that i was in the best place to be there was no way under heaven I was going anywhere. If at all I was going to bolster my career, I was always very ambitious that way. That's how I was looking forward to a future. Yeah. So I was not about to leave Joburg. I was not about to go and put myself in second best. I was uh, even though Durban was a major city, it had nothing on Johannesburg. I was not about to go and basically mess with my prospects. I was not about to go and start a first job in a city that um is going to give me a salary that is literally a fraction of what I would have gotten for the same job in Johannesburg. I stayed in Joburg cuz I knew that this was my springboard. Mm. Let me save this list. I should lose the content. Praise the Lord, I was able to save that content. Um if I can just keep myself still without moving, I may very potentially be able to maintain even a conversation without a speech lag. Moving on, yeah, no, I did not want to leave Johannesburg or Gauteng at all uh because I wanted to be close to the economic hub of our entire country, the main one. I didn't want to be away from either downtown Johannesburg or northern suburbs of Joburg. I did not want to be away from the commercial hub of my land that's what's good so i stuck around in soweto knowing knowing that i could always commute from there i could always take taxis patcos buses whatever just to get to where i need to get right i also did not want to have to travel multiple kilometers just to get to a job interview that i might fail it would be less disappointing that way like uh, people who come from the blazis who want desperately to move to josi mabonning uh getting a job interview and having to literally travel over two days three days just to go to a job interview that they may or may not get i did not want to have to travel to job to joburg from kzn where my mom was at when then i would get a a an interview only to be disappointed i wanted to stick around sadly however i was sitting around in soweto which would have been okay if my cousin and i had stayed tight if we had stayed all right i would have had like cuz you know uh, i loved my cousin so much and we were so close that it, i mean it like it was like basically ideal for us to live in the same house cuz we loved each other so much we grew up next to each other we liked each other more than we liked our own siblings yeah so for me it was like i was moving to an even better home it's just that you know it was less catered to than where it is that i came from it it was less the the finishes the decor the house itself it was not quite what my mom's standards of living were but i had my cousin and that's all that mattered so we're good right uh i was living now in this house and this chick then changed on me i realized that she was extremely competitive and that she was proud of my sorrow right her sister made the observation that she's mean to me and basically pampered and comforted me and she was younger than me by 4 years so during the season when i was uh, basically now living go soweto 
uh, do you understand from the very beginning of that particular year so it was 2003 four, five, beginning of 2005 because 2003 was my first year uh, as 2004 second year since I matriculated in 2002 this was now beginning of 2005 uh, given that the previous year I was at Vitz all year and my mom moved to KZN at the very end of the very of the of the two of 2004 okay so here it is that she's gone to kzn to get a job live there with my baby sister and i decide to stay home well in johannesburg which is my home debene was some strange place that i didn't understand right um i decided to stay here and i lived with my uncle who made me pay occupational rent from 600 rands like just all different kinds of weird stuff going on anyway whatever yeah 200 rand that's like yeah so it took away 400 bucking it left me with only 400 bucks and got 400 rand in i was I, basically told that I need not told I understood that with it I could do one or two things I could just basically pocket it and eat the gota and buy loose cigarettes since I used to smoke type thing with it or I could basically make sure that I use that money to buy a workplace every Wednesday uh, you know workplace the place where you could look for jobs I don't know if it's still a thing anymore uh, but there was a like a bit of a career junction in the in the form of a newspaper back in the day called the workplace in the star newspaper and it was every Wednesday that they sold it I could either buy a workplace every Wednesday to look for a job uh, and also travel to job interview save money making sure that should I get a job interview I get on a taxi using that money or I could just splurge it so I could not even buy basic things like the toiletries I preferred the whatever it is that I wanted I just used to save that 400 bucks just in case uh, no never mind just in case I used to use that 400 rands to buy a workplace every Wednesday and the money the coins like there were these pu public pay phones uh, I did not did I have a cell phone at the time I can't remember right I believe I might have had like some 3310 but like it was very very expensive to attempt to call a corporate uh, you know that that you saw the number of in a workplace using a cell phone at time so you there were like these uh container boxes that had public pay phones yeah that you could basically pay for a minute to you know talk and it was cheaper that way so i would save this money to uh, basically make phone calls to companies that advertised jobs like you know call center agents wanted a receptionist wanted blah blah anything at all i just wanted any job that would help me raise money to take myself back to school i did not care about the growth or the quality of that job understanding that i was a school leaver that had no qualifications who had dropped out of university gangane i could not be expecting a, an entry a job as a project administrator or whatever right I, I i was literally just looking for call center jobs that did not require any experience um blah blah yeah i was a complete school leaver and I used to take that money and wait online when, like, literally music playing in the background while you hold for minutes on end as this thing is just billing, 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 billing you until somebody is like, Old Mitchell, hello, how can I help you? Oh, I saw a job placement in the workplace only for them to tell you, oh, sorry, no, the vacancy, uh, we've already got enough people that have called in for the day. Uh, better luck next time. Thank you, bye. And by then you've already spent like 25 rands out of 400 rand. And this is something that I would be doing for days on end until I ran out of money. And then I couldn't anymore. I couldn't because I had to wait until the next month to get money from my mom. And if at all I did successfully get like a a job interview night right they they allowed me to go there i would find out that it's cold calling and in other words sales and i could not do cold calling i hated it i hated it i was not about to go out like that i tried one time there was actually a job interview that i successfully interviewed for where i found out that it's cold calling for t-mobile where we had to sell cell phone contracts to people not even in south africa but in the uk and um i went there for a week and the next week I couldn't go because I didn't have money. The next week I couldn't go back to work. I hated the job, but I told myself I'm going to ride it out because they not only paid uh, you commission, but they also gave a basic. The only reason I took that job was because it had a basic and a commission and I could not stay because the next week when I tried to go to work, I was told how What in the world? That, that was my life. That's how hard my, that, that's how, what barriers to entry I had. That's what limitedness I was endured through as a 20 year old girl, try woman, trying to basically break out of the mold of poverty. So that whole life situation really severely depressed me. It depressed me because remember I was bright. 
I was really gifted. I was basically earmarked by teachers and some students that I was going to be among the most successful people because I was, I was, you know, the kid that everybody was looking at on some, that's a star. And when you're the star, now sitting around as she need, gathering dust in the gassy, smoking cigarettes and eating the gota that you are hustling, stealing, uh, what do you call this, the kuku. My, my, my uncle used to sell cool drinks and, and beers and stuff like that. Every so often my cousin and I would like, you know, steal one, sticky fingers type establishment thing. Yeah, and, and that's you, you basically imagining that you're being spectacular or special or whatever. Cause you're gonna get to eat the gotayako with Sprite. Yeah, no, uh, that was all we had. I was low key very depressed, even though I had comfort in my little cousin. And the reason I was depressed was because I just felt like my future was over. Like I was going nowhere. I was supposed to be successful. I was supposed to be one of those that people are looking out for. Look, that was gonna be great. And then I, I end up nowhere. Yeah, no, I was in the gassy gathering dust with barely any money to buy workplace, to make phone calls, to jobs, uh, to, Yes, like a goodness gracious, guys, yes, your story Senna. I at some point have got to work out, you guys. I cannot be here for too long. So let me just get straight to the gist of this matter. This situation got me severely depressed. I told you I came back negative from an HIV test, so that was not sufficient enough reason for me to kill myself. If I had tested positive for HIV, I was gonna kill myself. I was I, like, I, I wanted an excuse to end my life. I wanted something to show me or to tell me that it was worth it for me to take myself out. And then I came back negative. After the HIV negative test, I went back then to the grain of Bukasi. And my cousin was younger than me by four years. So it's not like she was just gathering dust with me in the Gassi. She was just back home on time to hang out with me. I was just all day, every day. My my cousin, the, the one that was my best friend, she went to work. She used to work some receptionist job. Do you understand? Her mom and dad went to work. Uh her sister went to school high school so in the mornings i was so depressed because i would wake up and i was the only one in lean uh, with maybe like uh, some cousins some older cousins that were always in and out like uh, the maid the lady that used to stay in the house one minute the domestic worker um the house was always uh what do you call this there was always someone it's one of those houses go see that like barely ever would there be no one on the property plus there were people that used to live um but they i was not the only person left in the house i think there was a maid and also one of the other guys that was always just there yeah but the depression the depression the fact that everybody was waking up and like in the mornings i used to cry inside when i would hear my uncle bathing my aunt bathing when i would hear my cousins bathing when i would like basically smell in the room spray like sa aerosol you know basically getting ready for school everybody was waking up and going somewhere and i was the only one and it used to break my heart so much oh guys i'm just getting so emotional thinking about it i've been through so much i was so sad i was so sad i was like how in the world why why did i study for science why did i study for maths why did i why why under heaven did i even try to do extracurricular activities at school to boost my stats why 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 because all of that nobody cares that i i put in the time no one cares that i was on the honors roll goes go long like okay why did, I, why did i do all that for what and i was just sitting there they would go to school after Bazamaya. it would be then dead quiet around like by by seven by half past six seven because you know traffic they gotta catch traffic whatnot and it would be quiet and i would then wake up i used to smoke cigarettes because i was peer pressurized into smoking so i would like go into a corner and smoke i would go go the back of the house because my uncle was not there so there was no one to run away from and i would smoke and after smoking i would be super depressed cigarettes used to make me feel weak like i never ever got used to them that's why i so easily quit them um i would smoke and i would feel worse even from smoking uh cigarettes i i would then go in the house and like just whoa goodness um when i went to the clinic to test for hiv i grabbed a whole bunch of pamphlets there if anything i feel like the nurse gave me pamphlets to read on all different kinds of stds i would page through these stds and see all these graphic photographs of like general warts and different kinds of nasties and study these pamphlets basically because i wanted to study anything anything at all and i told you guys that i was very interested in in biology so i um i used to study pamphlets from the clinic teaching myself about all different kinds of std how they start blah blah what blah, 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 because when you get 
when you go for an HIV test, they just give you some educational and, and material for you to take back. So I was what, going through these Wada Wada fish paste, and then after reading them, I would read magazines again over and over and over and over again, just waiting for my my little cousin to come home. My little cousin would then arrive at around like 3 p.m. because Kolo would finish at like 2:30 or whatever. Yeah, she would be back. Sometimes she would come back with the boyfriend. They used to go to the same school uh, type establishment thing and then I would start to hang out with them. My heart was heavy, it was sunken, I was in pain, but I never let it show. I was always laughing with them, we were always making jokes, again now, but they were also smoking type thing. I was hanging out with kids, the boyfriend was older, uh, the, he was younger than me by like uh, perhaps a year uh, or two or something and he was older than her by two years. So he was like maybe in matric and she was in grade like... I don't know, I can't remember man, like but my cousin was like, they were both in high school at some point, ultimately the guy then matriculated etc. Ish, one minute. Yeah, eventually uh, they matriculated because of my cousin's boyfriend, he used to do capoeira. So um, we started getting interested in capoeira and stuff and we would go to like the netball courts and, and do capoeira, he would like train us and teach us so it, it helped, it was like an antidepressant to a certain extent, their, pre their, their, their company, the company of my baby cousin and her boyfriend, I was like a third wheeler but it didn't matter because they didn't make me feel like one, it helped right it really helped because you know god has been so gracious all throughout my life after my cousin treated me like trash he gave me them the kids he gave me these kids they were kids to me right because they were younger than me by a couple of years but nonetheless they functioned as like i said it was a, a bit of a band-aid on cancer there was relief in them there was a lot of relief in my little cousin and that's how i ended up getting tight period pretty much uh it never really like our relationship was was um solidified my baby cousin and i from that time we we just continued to grow from strength to strength of course after losing everything everybody fell off the bandwagon where i'm concerned but that cousin of mine stayed really very um tight we stayed close because of that time if it was not for that time i, I would have still she would have always just been to me a baby a kid a child that i would be like hello ha, bye hello bye Hey, she by love these children, but then she became an actual friend because of the fact that she was there for me when her older sister was not making sense. And again, she also vocalized the fact that her little, her older sister Unasele she vocalized and said that I don't know why my sister is doing this to you. It's it's wrong because you're going through a lot. But anyway, whatever. I got your back type thing. So I was good. But the thing that used to make me sad was that everybody goes somewhere and I'm sitting at, uh, in the gassi. Everybody goes somewhere and I'm sitting in the gassi. When I had money which was barely like just at the beginning of the month uh that's when i would buy the workplaces over like two weeks and then like call and call and call and call and then there would be two weeks where it was dry and i could not now go to the workplace my cousin used to finance my little cousin she used to finance my goddas she used to finance my cigarettes she used to find basically because she used to get carry from her dad right and her mom who used to give her money she would finance these things when i would run dry type establishment thing like god has always made sure that in spite of irresponsibility um on the part of those who were supposed to take care of me that there was always kids taking care of me like kids my age or you know like with my cousin she was younger like when i was in high school i had this friend that i used to work walk to the taxis with i used to walk from my school which was quite a, a distance to where it is that i would get taxis that would go to north the other day i said brie that was a mistake i wanted to say north i would go to north taxi rank uh i had to walk a, quite a distance because the, the ones that were outside my school only went up up to brie so if i wanted to get to north i had to walk some distance and there was this chick that i used to walk up there with and she would take taxis that would take her to her neighborhood which was not very far from my school and every single day she used to buy me kfc um even though i had absolutely nothing to my particular name right so i've always in spite of one minute in spite of the remember i told you guys in is it yesterday's or day before yesterday when i was talking about baby jake matlaka matlala and how he used to shell high school girls i spoke about and i was busy lamenting in that video about these men that are similar to baby jake in that uh, type thing i spoke about how uh, my parent was very miserly uh, and never used to give me like enough pocket money and it was just such a problem for me i only had just enough to get on taxis and sometimes i wouldn't even have um lunch at school because i wouldn't have time to make it so i would go hungry all day type establishment thing and then i would only eat when i got home uh yeah well i had friends that always fed me like i was fed by my girls in high school during the day galanchi and and the afternoons and the after school i also had this like friend that almost every single day like without fail clockwork 
for something like maybe over two grades maybe grade 10 and 11 that's when i used to stay in alberton and so i would have to walk up there after that i had moved to another neighborhood so i was not using the same taxi route and so i didn't walk with her anymore uh but for those two years she would for those two years i would i would eat I, she used to feed me like proper like kfc every single after school every after school Nerea called kfc and she would buy me streetwise too so when when the when, uh, when like the call of jeremiah in the bible where the lord says that i i predestinated you for this job and i called you from the eternity past knit you together in your mother's womb for a particular job i believe it i believe it because i saw how god took care of me even before i knew him even before i could acknowledge him even before i could walk in what he wanted me to do he already gave me provision through a myriad of other forces when the the, the 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 responsible force in my life that was put in place to do these things for me just could not care less about me i don't eat my parent like the one who could not care less about me i nonetheless always had someone that did care i had friends that catered to needs that my that parents ought to have catered to like that was the weirdest thing for me i was raised by a village a community including Abangani, the kinds of friends that are like it's nothing whatever it's what under the bridge to spend money on you every single day but whatnot so all of the backstabbing that i've endured from pretty much everyone that's ever come in my life it's like how in the world are you gonna go and waste memories like that how in the world are you gonna go waste your ride or die state like that how in the world are you gonna go eliminate from the timeline the fact that when i was in high school you're the one that fed me got lunch you're the one that bought me a kfc after school you're the one that you're the one you know what i mean like how in the world are you gonna go to squander all that how are you gonna go and love witchcraft to a point where you will squander the fact that at some point in this particular woman's life you were used mightily by god so that she does not have to suffer so much want anyway let's move to the next part i'm being distracted by eavesdropping come on one minute <laughs> 